In this video, we're talking about how to use a Riemann sum with midpoints to approximate the area under the curve. And remember that Riemann sums is just a technique that you can use to approximate area before we learn how to use the integral or the antiderivative to find exact area. So like trapezoidal rule, Simpson's rule, this is going to be an approximation method. And in this particular problem, the function that we've been given is f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2. So we're going to be interested in approximating the area underneath this curve and above the x-axis over the interval x greater than or equal to 1 less than or equal to 6. And you can also think about this interval as 1 to 6. It's the same thing, just written a different way. So we're interested in the area in that interval under the curve, and we're going to be using five rectangles or five subintervals to approximate the area. And we know that because we've been told that n is equal to 5. So in any Riemann sum problem, the first thing you want to do is find delta x. And the formula that we always use for delta x is b minus a divided by n. We already know n is equal to 5. a and b come from our interval. So if the interval is 1 to 6, then a is 1 and b is 6. Or you could write that here, a is 1 and b is 6. So what we want to do is plug those values into this formula for delta x. And we get 6 minus 1 divided by 5, or 5 over 5 or 1. So in this case, delta x is going to be equal to 1. We're going to be plugging that into our area formula here for delta x. So now all we need to do is find these values f of x1, f of x2, f of xn, etc. So in order to find those, first we're going to need to find the values x1, x2, xn. So in order to find those, let's take a look at our curve to see what we're actually looking at. So this is the graph of f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. And remember that we're interested in the interval x equals 1 to x equals 6. So if we mark that off here on our graph, we're interested in x equals 1 to x equals 6. So the area underneath the curve between these two green lines here. Now this is an interesting curve because if we look at x equals 1 and we draw a line until we meet the curve, we're going to be going down below the x-axis until we get to this point right here. On the other hand, if we go to x equals 6, the right-hand side of the interval, and we draw a line until we meet the curve, we're going to be going up above the x-axis like this. So what we have to remember is that we're going to be finding net area, which means that we treat area above the x-axis as positive and area below the x-axis as negative. We can just see from the visual picture of this graph that there's more area below the x-axis than there is above the x-axis, which means that we should expect to get a negative value for area, and that negative value for area just tells us there's more area enclosed by the graph in the x-axis below the x-axis than there is area enclosed by the graph in the x-axis above the x-axis. So now we needed to find the subintervals between x equals 1 and x equals 6. And that's the reason that we found delta x. We said delta x was equal to 1. So what we want to do is start at the left end of our interval, the interval 1 to 6. We're starting at the left end, x equals 1. And we want to count over delta x. So since delta x is equal to 1, we want to count over 1 unit. So to count over 1 unit from 1, gets us to 2. And we want to keep counting over that same distance until we get to the right end of our interval. So counting over 1 again gets us to 3, 1 again gets us to 4, and 1 again gets us to 5. 1 again would get us to 6, the right edge of our interval, so we know that we're done. And now what we can do is call each of these subintervals, we can label them with a number. So this first subinterval between 1 and 2, we can call interval number 1. This would be interval number 2, interval number 3, number 4, and number 5, and the number of subintervals we have this way should match the number n that we were given. We have 5 subintervals here, n was equal to 5, so we know that we're good. Now remember that we've been asked to use midpoints to find area. So the next thing we need to do is find the midpoint of each of these subintervals. So the first interval goes from 1 to 2. Halfway between those two values, or the midpoint between 1 and 2, would be 1 and a half, or 3 halves. And that's this point right here, x equals 3 halves. So that's going to be the midpoint that we're going to use for our first subinterval. Halfway between 2 and 3 is 2 and a half, which we can call 5 halves. Halfway between 3 and 4 is this point right here, that's 7 halves. Halfway between 4 and 5 is this point right here. We'll call that 9 halves. And then halfway between 5 and 6 is this point right here, which is 5 and a half or 11 halves. 
what we want to do then is start at each midpoint and go ahead and draw a line until we meet the graph. So if we draw a line until we meet the graph, we get this point right here. Same thing here, we'll get to this point right here. That's going to be this point here. Here we're starting to go up above the x-axis, this point here, and then up above the x-axis to this point here. So those five points we just drew, those are going to define the height of each of our rectangles. So remember that the first rectangle that we're going to use to approximate the area over the interval 1 to 2, this subinterval 1 to 2, the base of it is going to be from 1 to 2. The height of the rectangle is going to start at the x-axis and go to this point that we just found. So if we draw the rectangle, it's going to have this base here, and it's going to extend down until we meet that point that we just drew. Same thing here, the base is going to be from 2 to 3, and then it's going to extend down to the point that we drew. Here the base is from 3 to 4, and it'll extend down to the point we drew. Here our rectangle is 4 to 5, and it extends up to the point that we just drew. And then here our rectangle is from 5 to 6, and it extends up to the point that we just drew. So you can see how that if we found the area of each of these rectangles using this area formula, if we found the area of each of these rectangles and then we added all of these areas together, what it would do is it would produce an approximation for the exact area underneath the orange curve. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be an approximation of that area. So these midpoints, the values that we already found, these midpoints are the values we're going to use for x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, etc. So we want to start with the leftmost value here, which was 3 halves, and we're going to call that x sub 1. And then we're just going to say x sub 2, x3, x4, and x5. So we'll be plugging those in to our formula here for area. So when we do that, what we end up with is area is going to be equal to delta x we already know is 1, so we have 1 there, multiplied by f of x sub 1. Well, we know x sub 1 is 3 halves, so we're going to say f of 3 halves, and then we just keep going here. We're going to say plus f of 5 halves plus f of 7 halves plus f of 9 halves plus f of 11 halves, which is our last midpoint over here on the right. So this is then going to be the formula for area. So then the question is, how do we find f of 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves, 9 halves, 11 halves? Well, we just take those values and we plug them into the original function for x. And when we do that, for example, f of 3 halves is going to be this point right here, because when we plug 3 halves into the function, we're going to get f of x sub 1, or f of 3 halves. And you can see that that is the height of this rectangle. So f of 3 halves gives us the height of the rectangle. 1, or delta x, gives us the width of the rectangle. So width times height gives us area. And that's what we're doing every single time. We're taking here f of 5 halves, and we're multiplying it by delta x, or 1, to find the area of this rectangle. This will be f of 7 halves multiplied by 1. The width gives us the area of this third rectangle. And so because we're always multiplying by the width of each rectangle, and the width is always the same, we pull that width out in front right here. And so we factor it out. We factored out that 1, and then we just add up all of these values here. So here's what that's going to look like. Let's go ahead and find each of these values individually. To find f of 3 halves, we'll plug 3 halves into our original function for x. So we'll get f of 3 halves is equal to the square root of 3 halves minus 2. f of 5 halves is going to be the square root of 5 halves minus 2. And we'll do the same thing for the other three points. Then if we plug these values into our area formula, first of all, multiplying 1 by everything inside the brackets here isn't going to change the value of everything inside the brackets. Multiplying by 1 has no effect, so we can cancel that. So then we can just say that area is going to be equal to f of 3 halves. Well, we know that that's root 3 halves minus 2 plus f of 5 halves. So that's going to be root 5 halves minus 2 plus f of 7 halves, so root 7 halves minus 2 plus f of 9 halves would be plus root 9 halves minus 2 and then plus f of 11 halves so plus root 11 
halves minus 2. Now because none of these square roots are going to simplify very easily, we can go ahead and use our calculators to get a decimal approximation, and we can say that area is going to be equal to approximately negative 0.86. And then remember, because net area is negative, it tells us that there's more area below the x-axis than above it. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource, whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.